Hey, and welcome to the Joey Miller Podcast. I'm Pastor Joey Miller from Champion Christian Center, and I'm so excited to tune in today to a topic called When You Feel Like You're Behind. Have you ever felt like you were behind on something? Growing up, I would never want to miss school. In fact, I would be sick, and my mom would say, you know what, you need to stay home, and I would fight her tooth and nail to go to school because I didn't like to fall behind. I didn't like that feeling of being behind on schoolwork. Even today, uh, if I have a deadline, like I can't uh, focus unless I get what needs to be done finished in my life. There's just something that feels bad about catching up. Well, in life, you might feel like that. You might feel like, well, I feel like I'm behind. I feel like uh, I missed out on something. Whether you're tuning in today and you didn't get saved until later in life or maybe you have made some decisions that you would look back with hindsight and say I wouldn't have made those decisions you know I feel like they've put me behind or maybe you've received a promise from God and it just hasn't uh, manifested or come forth in the timing that you thought that it was going to come forth. Maybe it's a, a baby, a relationship, a spouse, a career, a ministry, whatever that is, I want to encourage you today that God is a God of perfect timing, that even if it feels like you're behind, God is working all things out for your good. And so nothing exemplifies feeling like you're behind, like the story of Joseph in the Bible. I want to dive in for a few minutes just to encourage your heart. If you're watching and you're like, hey, that's me. I feel like I'm behind. Uh, I want to bring everything up to speed. We're going to, we're going to get into the Bible so that you're not discouraged and you're not losing heart, that you're not going to back down or lose faith, but you're going to stick to the God of the promise. So Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 37. It it goes on to say uh, that Jacob had a son, many sons, but one son named Joseph was 17 years old and he was pasturing his flock with his brother. And it says in verse 3, Now Israel, meaning Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his sons because he was the son of his old age. So uh, Joseph is the favorite. He's 17. Uh, He has everything going in his favor. And it says this in verse 5. Now Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. And he said, now that we've heard this dream, basically, let's go out and kill him. Because the dream was that he was going to reign over all of his brothers. So could you even imagine, like, he was already the favorite. He was the youngest. Um, His dad loved him, made a coat of many colors, and his brothers are like, are you kidding me? Now you say you have this dream, and we're all going to serve you. Let's go out. And kill him. So it, it goes on and it says that he's actually not killed. He's sold um, by his brothers into slavery. And, and we see that Joseph all of a sudden is faced with the decision. Is he going to believe the dream that God gave him? Or is he going to buy in uh, to the thought that because things don't seem to be going in the direction that he thinks they should be going, that things are not going to happen in his life? And so we go on in the story. And so Joseph's betrayed by family members. I mean, think about all of the things that must be going on in his head. All of the things that he uh, is looking at as unknown variables. Like, I had this dream, God. I I spoke about this dream and now my brothers are intervening and they're messing up the plan. They're putting me behind. Who knows if it's even ever going to come to pass in my life. And so it goes on and we see that Joseph, uh, he's sold out of slavery and he ends up in Potiphar's house. You might know the story of Joseph. If not, go read the details. But in chapter 39, the story progresses And he's serving in Potiphar's house. And things are starting to go in the right direction for him again. He's advancing. Potiphar, who was this uh, amazing ruler, loves him. And... And things look like they're turning around. Maybe you're in a, in a place where you're like, okay, like things things were rough there for a spell, but I feel like they're turning around now. And then all of a sudden, uh, Potiphar's wife tries to uh, have an affair with Joseph. And Joseph's like, I'm not having any part of this. And so uh, he runs from her. She still frames him for rape, basically, and he goes to prison. So Joseph not only was betrayed by family, but now he is falsely accused and he's in a prison Cell. I mean, this guy keeps getting knocked down over and over again. And even in the natural, it feels like he's not getting closer to his dream or his promise from God. It actually looks like he's going backwards. Not only does it look like the timeline's going backward and he's not uh, up to speed on where he thinks the dream should be, 
but it even looks like things are diminishing in his life. He lost his father. He lost what he felt like his father's favor because now he's in a foreign land. Um, you know, now he he's in a place where he's even lost his freedom. He's in prison uh, here in a deep pit. And so Joseph goes on and, and it talks about how he starts to interpret dreams in the prison. And um, and the baker and the cupbearer, they're like, hey, when we get out of here, we're going to tell Pharaoh about you. And so uh, Joseph uh, is waiting and waiting and two whole years go by and he's forgotten. So he's betrayed. He is uh, falsely accused. He's forgotten at this point and he's far away from the dream. Maybe you are saying, hey, that is me. I feel like I'm forgotten by God. I feel like I am far away from where I originally started. Uh, I just want to encourage you today that every step in Joseph's life, even though it felt like it was diminishing, when he stewarded his adversity in a place of faith and steadfastness, it was actually propelling him towards the promise. You know, I always say that every promise that God gives us or every dream that he gives us is actually an invitation to a process. And we see this in Joseph's life. And that process doesn't always feel good. Sometimes that process feels like we're behind and we need to come up to speed. And and we see here through Joseph's life and the example of Joseph that God was working even in the adversity, even in the adverse situation and circumstances. And just because it didn't look like how Joseph thought it would look, he saw the end. He didn't see the in-between. And so maybe you've received a promise and you're in that in-between season and God has given you a glimpse of how, you know, if you'll stay in faith, it's all going to work out, but you're not seeing anything uh, manifest yet. I would just encourage you to stay in faith. What do you do when you feel like you're behind. Number one is this, Joseph stayed focused on the dream. You never hear Joseph once uh, questioning the dream that he had. He was never like, oh, maybe I heard wrong. Maybe I had too much pizza last night. Uh, Maybe that wasn't God. If the enemy can get you out of a place of believing the seed of faith that God has given you, that dream, that vision, that desire that's from him. The Bible says that when you delight yourself in the Lord, he gives you the desires of your heart. When you're seeking God, he puts a desire in your heart. And that can translate into a dream or a purpose or a, a, a desire for your life. Maybe today you're watching and your your dream is to have um, a child and it hasn't manifested yet. God gave you that dream not to disappoint you, but to bring it to pass. And it might not look like things are unraveling on the timeline that you want, but stay in faith. Maybe that's a spouse that you're believing God for. Maybe it's a second marriage and your first one was just a train wreck and you're like, God, is there hope for a, a future of a good relationship? Stay in faith. Joseph stayed in faith. Even during the trial, you never see him questioning the dream. Hey, it's Joey. I hope you're enjoying today's podcast. I want to invite you to check out our Christmas bundles. Maybe you have a friend or you have a secret Santa that you want to bless somebody with some great faith-filled gifts. Check out joeymiller.co and find our bundle package that might be just right for you. The second thing is you never see Joseph questioning God in the trial. He's never like, God, where are you in this process? Where are you when I'm in Pharaoh's house? Where are you when I'm in the pit and my brothers are selling me into slavery? You don't see that from Joseph. The text doesn't tell us that. I'm sure he was tempted maybe to think, God, where where are you in all of this? But he kept a steadfast mindset in the God that he served. That if God uh, was with him, that, that whatever circumstances came against him, God was going to use it for his good. And he kept in the promise of the God, not only who gave, not only of the dream, but the God who gave the dream, that God would be faithful to bring it all to pass. And the third thing that he did was he kept moving forward. Keep moving forward. If you feel like you're behind, keep moving forward. The worst thing that you can do is to stop. Uh, my daughters and I go on walks all the time. And we 
we'll walk and we'll be talking and we'll, we'll be like, oh my gosh, like we walked two miles and we're like, we're tired. But guess what? Now we have to walk two miles back uh, to where we started. And we were like, if, if only there was another way to get back to the starting point, because we're like done now. We feel like we should be at the end. And really we're at the furthest point from where we started. And so we could feel like that in our faith walk sometimes. We're like, God, like I'm done now. Like, I, you know, I, I'm ready. I, I'm done. I'm tired. Um, I feel like I'm further than ever. And God is saying, just keep going. Just keep persevering. Just keep doing what you know to do. Keep walking forward in righteousness. Joseph walked forward in faith and righteousness uh, with Pharaoh's wife. He could have been like, oh, what the heck, God, where are you? I'm just going to go ahead and, and have this affair. What does it matter? No, he kept himself righteous. He kept himself in a place of, of using his gift. Even when he was in the pit, he could have been like, forget it. I'm not going to interpret dreams. Where did that dream get me the last time I interpreted a dream? No, he kept using his gift. He kept working the things that God put in his life. So keep on keeping on, keep walking forward in the promise. The story ends and we see that Pharaoh brings Joseph out. He elevates him uh, to a high place, second in the kingdom. We see his brothers actually come and find him and God brings restoration and the dream does come to pass. And at the end of Joseph's life, when his brothers apologize to him, this is one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. Uh, he says, no, no, don't apologize to me for what the enemy meant to harm me. God actually used it for my good. And so be encouraged today if you feel like you're behind, if you feel like you're running against adversity. Maybe that adversity is a timeline. God is never late. God will bring everything up to speed in your life and he will oftentimes do it differently than you think he will do it. The Bible says his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So we get that promise and then we construct in our mind the plan of how it's going to go. And when it doesn't, it can shake our faith. Or when adversity comes up against that plan, we could say, where are you, God? And, and it can make us back down. But don't do that. Continue to work, walk forward knowing that God's working it all out for your good. Stay in that place. Know that you're not behind. God is a God of restoration. God is a God who makes up time on the harvest. Uh, so just know that if he put it in your heart, he has full intention to bring it to pass. He is the author and the perfecter of your faith. I am not the author of my faith. I'm not the author of how my life should go. He is the author. Not only did he write it, but he perfects it. What does that mean? He's making it all complete and perfect in his timing. Be encouraged today. You're not behind. God's working it all out.